All right, welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. They're saying uh, it must be cold and insane peak as a heavy sweatshirt. All right, yeah, it, it's we're we're like uh, we're like low 60, but in my defense, I'm I'm born and raised here, so I mean anything below 65, and and we're dressed up like this. Uh, I'm planning a weekend trip to Chicago next month to see one of my buddies from college, and I have no idea what I'm going to do out there. So, yeah, any hand-me-downs, let us know, jacob at tfnn.com. Anyways, I believe we have Steve Rhodes on. Uh, Steve, can you hear me? I can, and I'm, I'm bundled up, hey. too. I've got, a, I've got a sweatshirt on, too. I'm freezing. You look great, Steve. That's that's the Florida Boys special right there. I am freezing. <laughs> you, 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 you set, you set uh, 65 as uh, yeah. I use it. It gets below 70. That heat comes yeah. on. So. Exactly. And every uh, as a rule of thumb, too, everyone in Florida, their their winter outfits just for some reason look significantly better than our summer outfits. Yeah, I got a old T-shirt on and khakis or something in the wintertime. It's, you know, it's like the I whole runway. You. So, Steve, Steve what you. are we uh, what are we looking at today? Well, so, you know, it's a it's a rally party. So as everybody knows, right. the Dow, the S&P 500, the Nasdaq have made a new all time high. So I thought we'd start by taking a look at this chart just to get a perspective. Uh, so the Dow is in the upper left hand side. Uh, shows the new all-time high that we're trading at. Next to that, we can take a look at the Shanghai index, so we get a feel for China. Now, in the case of China, so first, with regard to the Dow, we're trading above last year's high. Whenever you trade above the high of a prior bar out there, or certainly whenever you trade above the prior year's high, it is bullish, period, end of story. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it can't top and pull back down, but you are totally in breakout mode. So if we take that, Jacob, and we apply that to what's going on over in the Shanghai, we can see we're trading below last year's low. Mm -hmm. So it's very bearish over there. Yes. So we don't see global capital moving over to uh, the Shanghai. If we take a look at the Nikkei, it's approaching, but it's approaching its high. That takes us all the way back into uh, 1990 out okay. there. So it's on its way up there, but it's still not an all-time <laughs> high. Neither is the FTSE, neither is the uh, DAX. Uh, over in Australia, the uh, Aussie 200 index made it within 10 cents today, this morning, earlier this morning, uh, from its all-time high out there. But the point here is that the breakout that we are seeing is inside the U.S. indices out here. I see. And if we, in this chart here, what uh, we do, it's really important to understand, especially when we take a look at the uh, large cap indice, so the Dow. The Dow gets trashed a whole lot, but where the Dow shouldn't get trashed is understanding how it's trading in major currencies out there. And so on the upper left-hand side here, we've got the Dow priced in dollars. Next to that is priced in euros. Today made a new all-time high. This is a daily time frame chart that we're looking at. We've got a new all-time high in terms of yen, a new all-time high in terms of Aussie dollars, a new all-time high in terms of Swedish corona, a new all-time high in terms of Great British pounds. We're not a new all-time high in terms of francs, uh, the Chinese uh, yuan, the renminbi, uh, Renembi and the uh, Canadian loonie out there. But the point of those first, uh, the, the first two rows out there is this is a rally. This is a global rally that we have going on. And that is the best kind of rally you could possibly have. In other words, you've got constituents in different countries uh, that have their local currency and they're, they're investing. They are buyers of the Dow. They yeah. are not sellers of the Dow. You could make a case that maybe, you know, in Juan or Canadian loonies or something, but with regard to being at all time highs in these currencies, that is a very bullish signal. Now all bull runs come to an end, but that's a very bullish signal and really important for people to understand out there. Got to take a look at these instruments, how they're priced inside the major currencies. The S&P 500, by the way, this is the chart for the S&P. It's also at new all time highs for euros, yen, pounds, Aussie dollars, and Swedish Krona. Okay, so we've got that established, and we've got a worldwide rally that's going on. And everything looks bullish, right? Well, maybe not. So most people know that the U.S. stock indices are weighted, right? So if you take a look at the Dow, maybe the top um, 10, 11, 12 or so are about 50% of the uh, weighting inside there, inside the NDX 100. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's the top 10 or 11, 12, some, somewhere around maybe the top 15, you get about 80, 50%, more than 50% of the weighting of the indice. So when we're seeing markets that are breaking out, what I like to do, Jacob, is go to take a look at the equal weighted ETF. So these are ETFs that we're taking a look at. The bottom row are the Qs, the Spies, the Diamonds, everything that you know you and I, everybody with inside TFNN, take a look at. Right. If we, the top row though is the equal weighted ETF. What you like to see is you like to see the equal weighted ETF 
confirming what we see in the weighted side. That gives us a broader rally. So that would be a simple signal. Well, in the terms of the QQEW, the equal weighted ETF for the Qs, it is at a new all-time high. In terms of the equal weighted Dow, which is EDOW, it is also at new all-time highs. But the issue is with it inside the S&P 500. The SPY, absolutely at a new all-time high. But RSP, folks, that is the equal weighted ETF for the S&P 500. And not until it gets to a new all-time high and starts trading above it, can we really say that we've got one heck of a rally par uh, party going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good way to look at it, huh? Okay, and in the case of the RSP, the equal weighted ETF, it's trading with inside its profiles out there in its first resistance level, folks. Again, RSP is a ticker symbol, is 157.38. If price begins trading above 157.38, we're getting closer to a uh, breakout message, but it has to take out its all-time high from earlier, uh, uh, from the middle of uh, last month out there. So this is really important for everybody to take a look at and understand. The RSP, uh, like I said, it's not at its all-time high, but when we take a look at the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame, each of them still have a topping pattern. So in the case of the daily time frame, it's both a wave number seven, that's the letter G on my system. It's a very small portion of the Chapman wave. It's also got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. In the case of the weekly, it's a TD9 count top that's out there. In the case of the monthly chart, it's a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that's out here. So it's got those tops in place. Not until those levels of resistance get taken out will I have a uh, comfort level that we truly are getting ready to break out and move to new all-time highs. A second non-confirmation, and this one is going to be much easier to resolve uh, than the RSP, at least immediately, is the uh, New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. And uh, Jacob, that's the uh, third panel that we're, or the third area inside this chart, really in the middle out there. And when it gets down to minus 150, and this is, folks, what this is, this is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. When, we get, when that reading or that ratio gets down to minus 150, you are in oversold territory. Well, a couple of days ago, uh, middle of next week, uh, last week, uh, we got to that, we got well below minus 150. And what the New York Stock Exchange is doing is working off its oversold condition. Only closes above this zero threshold line, this little red line that's going across it, would tell us that buyers are the ones in control. So there's two signals at the moment right now that just say caution. There may be a third or set of signals out here, and that comes from the intraday charts for the ES Mini. And here, the daily time frame chart shows a Rhodes to indicator signal. That's a black diagonal line. Now, folks, that is not a top. The top comes when, we, when it generates a bearish reversal candle. So that's one thing to be looking for. Turns out the five-hour time frame chart has a, wave, has a TD9 count top. So that is still in place out there. The four-hour chart, no top just yet. The two-hour chart has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The 60-minute has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, as do each of the other intraday time periods. But here, if people may have noticed that in the 30-minute time frame chart, it broke through a key level of support at 48.77. But Jacob, that lasted for one bar. And one bar break of support, no way that that's a true breakdown out there. So folks, uh, we've got a true breakout that's going on. We don't have confirmation from the equal weighted ETF for just the S&P 500, the RSP out there. And we've got some signals just simply to pay attention to. So uh, tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. to the Trader's Edge Show. That's right, Steve. Thank you so much as always. You bet, Jacob. Take care now. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.